Okay, last lecture with a couple of examples. We're going to be simplifying complex rational expressions. They're called complex rational expressions because they have a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator, which I know you hate fractions. However, the nice thing is we can simplify this pretty easily. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the common denominator for this numerator and the common denominator for this, which the only denominator here is x and in the bottom one is y. So we're simply going to be multiplying by xy times xy. When we multiply xy up here times the first term, xy, notice the x's are going to cancel. We have to multiply every single person, each part, by xy. In our second step, we can see what happened. The x is canceled, so I simply am left with the y. In this, there's nothing that cancels, so I have 4xy. In this one, nothing cancels, so I have 5xy. And here, the y's cancel, so I'm left with 3x. I can then factor out what's common. In the numerator, I have a y that's common. In the denominator, I have an x that's common. And when I factor those out, I get y times the quantity 1 plus 4x divided by x times the quantity 5y plus 3. And that's my solution. Now, of course, you're going to say, yeah, Dr. Edmiston, that is so easy. It can't be that easy. Of course not. Now for the hard example. Let's see if I can get this paper up. Look at this lovely little baby. Let's move this up so you can see it better. Wow. What are we going to do here? Well, these are pretty easy to look at. But this one, this one needs to be factored first. So we're going to go ahead and factor it first. And then we end up with x plus 3 times x minus 3. Because if you happen to notice, this is the difference of two squares. So now we can easily see the numbers or the expressions that we need to multiply by in order to have a common denominator. We have an x plus 3, an x minus 3, and we have the same thing here. So we're going to be multiplying by x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x plus 3 times x minus 3. Notice we are actually only multiplying by the number 1 because this here is the number 1. Anything over itself is the number 1. So we're not changing the problem. We're just going to make it simpler. Okay, so let's go to the next step. Notice when we multiply this by both x plus 3 and x minus 3, the x plus 3's cancel, so we're left with 2 times x minus 3. When we multiply this one times x plus 3 times x minus 3, both terms cancel and we're simply left with 2x. By the same way, when we multiply this by x plus 3 times x minus 3, the x plus 3's cancel and we're left with 4 times x minus 3. And we multiply this times x plus 3, x minus 3, the x minus 3's cancel, and we're left with 2x, 2 times the quantity x plus 3. Then we get to our next step. We multiply in. We're going to have 2x. 2 times x gives me 2x. 2 times negative 3 gives me negative 6, plus the 5x. And then multiplying in in the denominator, 4 times x minus 3 gives me 4x minus 12 plus 2 times x plus 3 gives me 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 3 is 6. Simple, combine our like terms, we're going to get 7x minus 6 over 6x minus 6. And then we're going to factor out a 6 in the denominator, leaving a 7x minus 6 divided by, let's pull that over some, the quantity 6 times x minus 1, because I'm factoring a 6 out of here. Let's repeat that a little bit. Notice we're going to multiply 2 times x, 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, plus the 5x. We multiply this in, distribute the 4 in, distribute the 2 in, and then 2x and 5x gives me 7x minus the 6, 
and 4x plus 2x gives me 6x. Oops, Dr. Remiston caught herself. Oh, no, we didn't. And then we have negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. And then we can factor out a 6, and we have that. Final answer. Now, that's the end of the unit. So you have all your concepts here. You have um, all the information. And don't forget about your excluded values. What excluded values do we have in here? We can't have a negative 3 because that would be 0. We can't have a positive or a negative 3 in this one because it would be 0. A negative 3 or a positive 3. Therefore, x cannot equal 3 or negative 3 because those numbers would those numbers would cause our denominator to be 0. Time to start that test review. Any questions? See me tomorrow. Bye.